Hi, this is Andre Ng, President of House of Knives Canada here at Ambiente 2016, and I'm here with Dennis Epstein. He is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Canadian Culinary Designs. And today he's going to show us some exciting new things. I'm excited to tell you about the new line of Japanese cutlery that we've developed. It's called Dragon. Uh, we went to Japan with the goal to create a Japanese knife that would hold up uh, under rigorous circumstances um, and continue to give you the performance that people want from a Japanese knife. Kind of a German beat up ability and a Japanese performance all in one. This is uh, the first knife we did. This is the 8 inch Cook's knife, the most used knife uh, in, a, in a normal market. And first of all, we made it wider because people have bigger hands. Then what we did is we put more belly curve in the design. As you can see, this does two things. Number one, it uh, puts more edge in a smaller profile. Number two, when you're using the knife, people who do this, only a very small part of the edge will hit the board. As opposed to a knife with a flatter edge, if they come down, more the edge hits the board and the knife gets duller faster. So the knife will stay sharper as well. We've also used a new steel uh, that has just hit the market. It's called nitrogen steel. And what it does is it allows us to have a 63 hardness. And on top of that, it also allows us to be a one-piece construction knife, and it's American-made steel. We send it over to Japan, and it gives us the opportunity to have a good price point, a good value, and a good performing piece. It's dishwasher safe. Don't put a good knife in a dishwasher. But this can go in, but don't do it. And so we have a double cast full bolster. Uh, the tang goes all the way through the knife, so for strength. Uh, the micarta doesn't expand or shrink in heat. Micarta is uh, quite amazing to see it uh, introduce itself into the kitchen cutlery side of things because for so many uh, years and decades it's been used uh, very commonly in the sporting industry. Correct, correct. In fact, it was invented in the 40s by the Navy. Um, they need, it was so strong they would actually use it to, uh, for the um, things that hold the boat against the dock uh, it, because it was impervious to salt water. That's where Micarta started. It's actually a linen-based product that's in, encased in resin. I guess visually, for myself, and I'm sure for a lot of our viewers, they'll look at that and say, it doesn't look like a Japanese knife. <laughs> it, it looks like a German knife. We did that on purpose. Yeah. But it gives you the Japanese performance. And that, and at a reasonable price. So you have value, you have longevity, and you have quality of construction. Yeah. The thickness of the stock is about 33% thicker than yes, traditional right. knife, right? We use a three millimeter, what the Japanese like to call a hanyaki construction. This is actually the most popular construction of a knife in Japan. Yeah. They actually, in Japan, buy the one-piece construction knives, not the layered knives. Um, it's in the West that we like the layered knives because they're so beautiful. But we, we, again, we wanted this thing to be the donkey. We yeah. wanted it to hold up. Most Japanese knives are two and a half millimeter. Yeah. We constantly have people in our stores looking between the European knives and the Japanese knives and trying to make that difficult decision. Do I want something that's uh, more maintenance free or something that's more maintenance? Uh, with this with that heavier stock will give you kind of the best of both worlds, would you agree? That is exactly what we were going for. Yeah. We wanted to have, as I say, German beat up ability but Japanese performance. Yeah. Now, how are these going to be priced wise, uh, Dennis? Actually, they're they're. It's less money than our competitors. Uh, right now, they retail in the U.S. Uh, at one nineteen ninety-five. There are nine different SKUs. Uh, this is the eight-inch Cook's knife. This one is uh, that's near and dear to our heart. Uh, this is one that can actually help develop. Uh, this is called the Fusion. And what we tried to do here, Andre, is create a Japanese Santoku that actually does do everything. A knife that does everything it has the ability to cut through two pounds of asparagus in one pass. And you need a long enough blade to do that. So this is eight and a half inches. It's also a little wider. Again, it's a little heavier. So it's kind of that w reason we call it a fusion is because it's part cleaver, part cook's knife, part Santoku. And for people who want one knife that does everything, this is an exciting blade for them. A lot of chefs have been loving this knife too because it just allows them to be faster in the kitchen without having to keep running to their, their role. Yeah. It does so many things nicely. Yeah. Also yeah. even on the Santoku, which I'll show right here, you'll notice again, Andre, we put a lot of extra belly curve in that. In fact, we have more curve in our Santoku than any other Santoku on the market. Mm -hmm. Again, for the two reasons. Number one, it puts gives you more edge to work with. Number two, for people who come down hard on the board, uh, what you end up with is less of the edge actually hitting the board, so therefore the knife stays sharper longer.
Now the dragon knives are manufactured by Yakso. Can you tell us, speak to a bit of the history about their experience in the knife making? Yes, it's, it's kind of funny. Their factory is actually directly across the street from the factory that makes the Shun knives. Uh, so when I say across the street, you can take a pebble and you can throw it across and hit their front door. Um, they've been doing this since 1932 and they have huge knife tradition in their family. It's a family owned business owned by Mr. Yamada and his son. Um, they make beautiful product, but they wanted to break into this market, and so we kind of joined forces, and what they were missing was the price point. They had the quality down, but by using this new BD-1 in nitrogen steel, they're able to get a value, and so you get their Japanese tradition and quality on a value knife, and so that's why we think people are going to like it so much. A lot of people associate Japanese knives with extremely sharp angles. Uh, how are these sharpened compared to the European knives? This steel allows us to put a 16 degree convex edge on, which is basically the traditional Japanese edge that's been then strapped on one side with the leather wheel. The difference though between this and say the layered steel knives is that the entire edge is supported by three millimeters of stock. So. Out of the box, the layered steel knife may be a little sharper, but in two weeks, this is going to maintain its sharpness for a much longer period because the edge is being supported. Normal stainless steel, say a 400 series stainless steel, you can't put that type of edge on, on the knife. It, it simply doesn't have the strength to support it. You needed a carbon steel knife. That's another nice feature about this new super steel. It doesn't rust at all. We tried. And there's nothing in your house is going to get any stains on this knife. It's incredible. Yeah. And this is the only steel that Ken Onion has ever publicly endorsed. Uh, he's, he's in. And I think anyone who knows Ken uh, personally or professionally understands when he endorses something, he really stands behind it yes, because he, he believes in it. And on that note, we also have some uh, new uh, knives to talk about from Ken. This is the new Sky Series. Um, we made some improvements on it. They're now being made by Ken. We decided to build our own factory, so the factory is now located in Portland, Oregon, and uh, Ken built it, and uh, we look over the quality ourselves, and we've been able to bring the price down because of it. So this knife used to retail for $199, U.S. map, now it's going to have a U.S. map of uh, $119.95. We've improved the patterning on it, as you know, the sky pattern on the side of the blade is designed to... Uh, reduce sticking. Um, we are now applying it with a stencil so we can keep the edge, if you can get in a little close right there, you'll see that the edge is clean. Mm -hmm. For sharpening, for your sharpeners, it's this is much easier for them. Yeah. So you'll have a clean cut but less sticking on the side. Everyone will look a little different but the stencil does maintain much more consistency in what we're doing. The handle is made of G10 and for people who don't know what G10 is, you actually use it every day. You use it every day, I use it every day. It's the circuit board in our smartphone. And we use it for the same reason that they do. It doesn't expand or contract when it gets hot. And so again, I hate to say it, but it is dishwasher approved. Don't put a knife in the dishwasher. You can, but don't do it. And so what you have is a fiberglass weave in a G10 resin. Uh, it will not shrink or contract. Uh, it's 3D CNC, so you can see that it's three-dimensional in every angle, and it's actually ergonomically designed to sit in your hand perfectly. A lot of people ask if this is a stamped blade, and the answer is no. The real question people need to ask these days is, is it laser cut? Because you can't stamp these new super steels. They break. So a laser cut steel is more expensive, but it tells you that it's a better steel. And again, it's three millimeter stock. Uh, and it's this, so this is one of the best ergonomic choices out in the market today. And it is made in America. So it's one of the only Western choices out on the market today. Yeah. And even the Santility, you'll notice, is more weight in the back than a normal Santility. You can really leverage on the knife uh, if you're going to cut through chicken joints. It will go through chicken joints. We recommend it for chicken joints. It will also do fine vegetables. It will cut acorn squash as you've noticed again we leverage the handle up so that you can get that leverage point on it it's a slightly smaller handle than the regular cook's knife so for people with smaller hands they might like this also the texturing on the handle is uh, bead blasted okay. so what ends up happening is that um, it gives you a very grippy feel in fact you and I've been doing this a long time Andre I think we can agree that the texture G10 may be the grippiest handle we've ever 
even if your hands are oily, it will still grip in your in your palm. So we're kind of excited about that as well. Ken's uh, knives, when they initially launched as Rain and Sky, were available exclusively in Canada at House of Knives. So that uh, those two lines essentially just transition into this uh, one line, is that correct? That is correct, and they'll still be exclusive at House of Knives Canada. This is, again, Andre Ng from House of Knives, signing out from Ambiente 2016. Thanks for your time, Dennis. Thank you, Andre. Always a pleasure. Yeah, likewise.